Assalamu alaikum wa So last week I showed you how to sow your seeds and what the best ways of sowing seeds are and what you can sow this month. In today's video what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how to take care of your seedlings now that they're germinating and they're starting to pop their little heads up through that soil. Because you've gone through the effort of getting them started, now how do you take care of them? So I'm going to cover watering, feeding, lighting, all of that sort of thing. So keep watching and I'll show you what I'm doing. Right now, I'm just harvesting seeds from this orange habanero. Now, with these habaneros, because of the way I've saved the seeds, do you know what, I've saved them in the original packaging. This protects the seed. They've all got their original coating on. They've got everything that's in there to improve germination. They haven't been washed or treated or anything. So now I've got all my little seeds. I'm going to get these planted. AJ asked me on my last video, how many seeds do I plant in a pot like this? I've got all those seeds that I've just taken out of that pod and they're all getting planted into here. I'll try and separate them out as much as I can. And the reason that I'm planting more seeds right now is because I've got space in my propagator. So as and when pro space is appearing in my propagator, I'm popping in more seeds and getting them planted. So give them a nice covering, firm it down. So here's a pot that I put in the net propagator about a week ago. And this was done in the last video and I can see signs of chili seeds coming up. There's a couple coming up here. So I can see signs of life here. So I know that I need to be really on the ball with these because I know the rest of these chilies are going to pop up really quickly. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to take this off the heat and put it under the lights because I might stop the other seeds from germinating. So I'm going to leave that in the propagator for a couple more days and watch the other seeds pop up. Yeah. But in the meantime, this one that I've just planted, that's going inside. I'm going to give... I'm going to water the plants because, so it won't grow. Because we've got, because we've got um, heat under here, this soil tends to dry out very quickly. So we're going to give it all a water. Now you can do the watering. Papa, there you go. There's another one that's not growing. Okay, water, water that one. It's important to have the right levels of moisture. So I've got a couple of weeds here. Let's take those out. But can you see that plant there? That's just popping its head up. That's a chili plant popping its head up. You can see by the shape it's pop turning up. So you don't want to be pulling that out. I'm just going to leave it in the propagator probably another day and I'll see lots of other seedlings pop up. When I get two or three seedlings from this pot, it's going straight under the lights. So let's head over to the grow cupboard and let's have a look what's going on in there. But before I do, I'm going to check on this propagator as well. So we've got two propagators on the go at the moment. Whenever you've got seedlings inside propagators, it's necessary to check on them daily. So here's one where I've got a few weed seeds, but I've got my onions coming up. Normally I wouldn't be sowing these inside propagators and getting them germinated inside, but because I'm behind, I'm going to put these under the lights as well. Look how small they are. They're really young. They're just popping their heads up. Now they're going straight under the lights because I want to get them off to a great start. Now with onions, they're not going to stay under the lights for long. They're only going to be in there for a while I've got space. Um, let's have a look in here and see what we've got going. We've got loads of chilies in here. So we've got Dano chili here, the white type. The onions can just go and sit there. My mum's even gone ahead and sown some tomatoes actually. We've got red naga over there. We've got the cress under lights. They don't need to be in there. They're, they're something that we'll put in some salad or something. Don't worry about them. And there's other plants we've got in here uh, under this cake tree, under this cake tree that I didn't have space in the propagators for. So they're going to go out of here and into the propagator. And I've got rid of those onions. So they're going in there. There's these chilies are just popping their heads through, so they're coming out and under the lights. Look, Baba, look at this one. The plants that I've got in here, these are mainly my chilies. There's a few tomatoes and these big leaf plant, plants that I've got behind me. They're my uh, snake gourds and my uh, loofah gourds or ridge gourds. We, we grow them primarily for food, but again, they need a really long growing season. 
So that's why we've got them off to an early start. These kind of plants are going to need a lot of light because otherwise they're going to get leggy. And we just haven't got the day length at the moment to get them to where we need them to be naturally. So that's why we use these electronic lights. It's a full spectrum light that gives the plants everything that need red and blue light. And now I keep these lights on for probably about 10 to 12 hours a day at the moment. So we turn them on probably about six, seven o'clock in the morning and then we turn them off again at night. If you wanted to save on light or on your electricity bill, then it's a, a bit more work, but you could potentially move these onto a, a sunny windowsill in the morning or leave them there at night time so they catch as much um, sun as soon as the sun comes up and then move them into here for a few hours and give them that extra length of uh, light. Um, that's an option that we will do. You know, We will switch plants around. We will put things in here and move things out as well. We, we do do that sort of thing throughout the day, but we're not that busy yet to be doing that. So you can see how green and lush these plants are, these chili ones in, in particular. Um, and you can see this color of those yellow ones, those uh, the onions that I just put in. The onions haven't got enough light, that's why they're pale green and some are even yellow. They'll catch their light very quickly uh, and they'll turn much greener. And these chilly ones they're getting a perfect amount they're getting under the right under the light bulb if you look at my setup you're going to notice that i've got the light right in the middle all the light concentration is here i put all the seedlings that are going to need the most light right underneath the sun you know underneath the sun i, I called it uh, the, the light and that gives them the maximum exposure and the things that are getting a bit bigger and are starting to crowd things out they're going to go and sit on the sides because they're going to catch the light because of their height. They're going to catch the light because of um, because of the size of their leaves and all that sort of thing. These seeds don't need light. I mean, these pots that you can't see any, anything growing in, they don't need light. Darkness will help a lot of things germinate. But everything else here really needs to be in the sun as much as possible. Now, what you'll notice here is, as well, with these tomatoes, is here's a problem that you're going to get with, especially with lights. Because it's a small, confined area, this can get quite dry. Do you know the air can get quite dry in here? And when the seeds come out, the seeds remain dry and they crust all, crust together and they don't split. And the seedling just hasn't got the power to, to pull them apart. If the seed gets stuck on the leaves like this for a couple of days, come in and do some manual intervention and remove these seeds. With these tomatoes, it's really easy. But some seeds are not as easy to pull off like that. So uh, especially I'm talking about bottle gourds and uh, some kind of squash. The seeds can become really hard and stick to the leaves and then you have to use uh, pliers or scissors or something to cut the leaf off, uh, to cut the seed off, sorry. So that's it, all of these seeds are off. Sometimes you might see a seedling like this and they look like they're very shallow rooted. What's actually happened with that is the seeds have risen up to the top when you've watered, the soil settled and the seeds come up. And when they've rooted and they've germinated, they've germinated quite near the surface. Now with these plants, we need to make sure that they've got enough soil around the base of the uh, plant and around the roots as possible. So with this, let's go and top this up with some more soil. With these, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top them up with soil all the way up. It's very common, this, you know, this can, kind of thing can happen very easily. Um, There we go. Now those plants look like they've been covered quite a lot. You might even think I've been a little bit brutal with them, but don't worry about it. So with this, you, you'll notice that the soil was quite dry and those plants were quite dry. Now I'm going to give it a good water because what I want is all that soil to settle in around the base of the plants. I'm watering right onto the leaves of the plants because this soil's got quite wet and it has got hold in it. I've taken the lid of the container and I've used that as a tray to catch all the water in. So, and you'll notice that I'm watering very heavily. Now, when I water like this and I go for a heavy watering in the morning, I'm going, I'm doing that in the morning and I'm doing it under lights because what I'm expecting is those lights to dry out this soil. So a lot of that water's come straight through, which is brilliant. I'm going to just catch that water again. You don't want it sitting in water. So when it does come through, just come in and catch the water like that and you can use, recycle that water. These plants over here, the soil, the pot feels weighty. All of these pots feel 
a decent weight. None of them need water, so I'm not going to bother watering them. Anything that feels weighty, I'm just not going to water. These couple of cups that I've got seeds starting in, they're going into the propagator. We'll give them a little water as well. I'm sure lots of people will comment about um, white being more reflective of light than tinfoil. Now, there's a couple of reasons that I use tinfoil. Yes, white is more reflective of light if that was a purpose-built grow cupboard. Now, because I'm working in my home and this cupboard is not a grow cupboard, it's my wife's shoe cupboard, I need to protect it from whatever I'm putting in here. Now, the tinfoil, it reflects enough light and it gives me enough protection from, you know, it doesn't destroy the cupboard from all the stuff that I'm go that's going on here because it needs to be used as a piece of furniture again in a few weeks. So when we're talking about light levels and the type of light that you're going to be using, and generally blue light is what plants need earlier on. So blue light will encourage leafy growth. It'll encourage the production of chlorophyll. Then red light later on will produce uh, or give the plants the light that they need to produce fruits and and go on from there. So if you've got a, if you're going to use color light bulbs, use the blue lights early on and red lights a little bit later. When you've got a full spectrum light bulb. You don't need to worry about that. Now, the, the light that I'm using is quite an expensive setup. So there's a couple of people that have commented, Ali's one of them on our YouTube channel, um, that they come out, that they use a normal light socket and they just fitted a bulb front that they got online that's a full spectrum light bulb. And that gives the uh, plants enough light. They've, they've had good success with that. And it's a cheaper way of doing it. So if you want to do something like that, that's an alternative that you can use. Just buy yourself a bulb. Now with this spot here as well, you can see that the plants are coming up. They need a little bit more soil, but what I've got is really young seedlings coming through. I don't want to add soil to that right now like I did with the tomatoes because I've got plants at different heights. What I'll end up doing is I'll end up covering the leaves of the really small plants and I'll end up killing them. So I'm going to give them a few days. I'm going to let them grow their stalks a little bit stronger, a little bit taller. And when they're at that stage, I'll get top them up just like I did with that one with soil and we'll water them and use the water to compress that soil in and around the roots. Now I mentioned that I prefer top watering over bottom watering. You'll see this discussion a lot online. Um, I am a very, I am someone who likes to top water. Um, people will say that top watering causes dampening off. Dampening off is an issue when you've got cold environments. Now in a place like this where you've got warmth from the house, you've got warmth from the light, it's uh, generally dry in here dampening off is not going to be a massive issue if you had a massive draft in here then that might be a concern the reason that i like top watering is it helps it always helps settle soil around the plants because these containers as i'm lifting them as i'm moving them as plants are growing they're moving soil around they're moving it from around the roots the lights move you know uh the lights drying things out so the soil's constantly moving what i always want is a good level of soil contact People will say, let the plant sit in some water, soak up, um, soak up water. I do that with established plants, with large pots. Um, but I tend to follow the way nature comes. Generally, water comes from the top. It's big, deep-rooted plants that suck water in from down below. The shallow-rooted plants are taking surface water from water that's come from the rain. So I try and follow that sort of system and mimic that. It's quite early in the morning. It's about 8 o'clock. And... I like to water my plants early on in the morning rather than late on in the day and that way I can give them a good soak like I've just done. I can allow the lights and the warmth through the day to dry the plants off and get the water, water off the leaves, get the water, um, get any excess of water to drain through and that also helps with dampening off issues. Now if I'd have done this watering at night and then it was cold or um, I didn't have the heating on or something like that and it suddenly became really cold in here then I could have potential issues with dampening off and plants dying because of that, you know, that change in environment really quickly. Now the method that you see me sowing the seeds is I sow really intensely in really small spaces and that's because I've got a limited amount of area that I'm growing the plants in. Um, you know, I've, I've got less than a cubic metre of space to grow all my chilies in, all my uh, tomatoes in and get them exposed to light. So I've got to maximise the resources that I've got for the plants that I've got and the plants that I want to germinate. So now a common question that I get asked is when do you start feeding the plants? 
Now, generally with these plants, there's enough nutrition in that soil that they don't need feeding. I wouldn't feed these plants in the first month of their growth at all. I wouldn't use anything to feed them with. You're going to need to read the plant. You're going to sometimes need to look at the plant and say, okay, is the plant yellowing? Does the plant look too dry? Does the plant look stunted? What do I need to do to give it that encouragement? So if it's if it's yellowing, where is it yellowing from? Is it really yellowing from the older leaves? Is it yellowing from the new leaves? If it's yellowing from the older leaves, then it might be uh, calcium or iron or something like that. And then it's more than likely not a feed issue, it's a pH issue. Or if it's um, yellowing from the newer growth, it might be a nitrogen issue. Do you know? Um, that's the sort of thing that you're going to have to look out for, whether your plants are mineral deficient. And if they are, then adjust, then adjust accordingly. From about a month onwards, I'll give them a balanced feed. I won't give them a plant. I won't give them a feed that's gonna try and boost them into into fruit production or leaf production. If my plant looks stunted, I might get a little bit of chicken manure, soak it in some water, and use that water to uh, water some of the plants that are looking a little bit stunted to try and put encourage it to put on a bit more leafy growth. And that's what you want early on. You want bushy, leafy plants. And then later on, give it a more balanced feed or nutrients in there that are going to encourage it to produce fruit. So your potassium and your phosphorus later on. And a really good feed for that is giving them something like um, a comfrey feed. I really like comfrey feed. Oh, my favourite, if you haven't got comfrey, then um, a weed tea. So take the dandelions, the docks, the nettles that are all growing in your garden, turn them, mush them all down into a soup and use that juice to water your plants. I wouldn't recommend it in the house because it can get quite stinky. So you can see how that little bit of water has caused this, this uh, propagator to get steamed up inside because it was quite dry in there. I've just given it that little bit of moisture and given it that humid environment. When you notice that your seedlings aren't germinating, sometimes it's important to give it that water. If you didn't have constant heat underneath in a propagator situation, then giving it too much water could be a downside. It might cause the seeds to rot. But when you've got lots of heat and it's got the right environment, a little bit of extra, extra water isn't really going to harm it. So there's a, a quick summary on how to take care of those seedlings that you've worked so hard to get going. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates. If you would like to support our channel, you could also become a patron. I'll leave a link for it at the bottom of this video. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi